Hi, everyone. My name is Nina Kotler. I'm a radiologist and the Associate Chief Medical Officer for Artificial Intelligence at my practice, Radiology Partners. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about the AI Certificate Subspecialty course that is for emergency imaging. Um, I am one of the course directors and have helped crafted the course content and really hope you like it. Want to talk to you a little bit about why I think it's valuable. So, so number one, um, why should you take this course? What do you come away with after taking it? You know, artificial intelligence in radiology started off really in the emergency imaging arena. Most of the early applications and even most of the applications now are in the CAD-T section. That means computer-aided detection for triage. And, um, and that's in part because at least in, in the US, uh, these models are easier to get through the FDA for clearance. Um, and, uh, and with that, they can get out to market sooner. So what does that mean, computer-aided detection for triage? It means finding critical findings using computer vision AI that will then alert you as a uh, physician about a critical finding so you can read that study earlier, which is nice uh, because if you think about how our work lists are organized today, it's really based on service level objectives. Those have very little to do with patient outcomes and quality of our work. It's related to some uh, objectives that we set up with the sites saying how quickly we should read things. That can have some value, but if you put in something that actually provides you with information about which patients have the most critical findings and you could read those first, that's gonna provide a lot more value for your patients. Now, especially these days where we just don't have enough radiologists to do the work. Most of the time, our turnaround times are not that great. I, I remember in the beginning when people were talking about CAD, T, and triage, hey, listen, I read all of my cases in 30 minutes. My average turnaround time for ER cases where most of these findings are happening is 15 minutes. So if I change that to 12, it's not going to be a big deal, right? Well, these days, that's not really the case. So if you can triage all of your cases with critical findings or, or a bunch of them, and you could read those within a timely fashion, then you have a way of organizing your crazy work list that's probably overwhelming into a way that is optimized, not just for service level objectives, but for patient care. So all of the work we do in emergency imaging, and I am emergency radiologist, that's my subspecialty. Um, I do a lot of remote imaging. A lot of that work is all critical. It comes from the ED. So we do want to make sure we have a work list that's optimized. We also want to be able to have assistance in finding those critical findings. Uh, we, we're pretty good at it. In fact, you know, our visual cortex is pretty well defined. It's been matured over uh, hundreds of thousands of years. But with that, we're not perfect. We all know that. And, uh, and what we found in uh, my practice is that the AI for even a computer-aided detection in triage, but also for a, uh, a CAD-E, which is just an actual detection model, they can help enhance the sensitivity and the specificity of your, v of your reads. So it can make you a more accurate radiologist when you properly consume the AI. So all of those things are things that you will get access to and will teach you about. Um, the, uh, the final thing that I'll mention, and we're going to mention it a little bit, right? The, the ways that you can become more efficient and make your day easier as a radiologist is also important. We're all getting overwhelmed. We are all having burnout. There's just too much work to do. And there are natural language processing models and even generative AI, these large language models that are becoming available to help us with our reporting and with the back end workflow that's not necessarily patient facing, but it's the stuff that we have to do that are administrative tasks. These models are making it easier for us as radiologists to practice at the top of our license. They're making it easier so we don't have to dictate as much. And, um, and at the end of the day, many of them are decreasing radiologist burnout. So we'll go through all of those with you and the different mechanisms, the different AI that can be utilized in emergency imaging to ass assist physicians in this arena. Next subject, um, what are some of the concepts that will be specifically discussed in the course? Uh, we crafted it to make it easier for you as a 
consumer or someone who's interested in this region to assess, deploy, and monitor emergency imaging AI in the workflow. We have crafted bite-sized didactic lectures that are augmented by hands-on experiential learning to give you a combination of information from experts, but also the, the critical experience uh, that you need to understand how these models work. We have split them into six didactic models, a AI refresher, just general information about AI that was uh, summarized from our foundation course. We went then into how do you evaluate an AI model, uh, looking at it from all different standpoints, a business standpoint, a technical standpoint, and a clinical standpoint. And then talking about computer-aided detection for triage, which I spoke about already at length, uh, just because there's so much of that that's out there. And let's go into what the value is and show you some of those examples. Next is uh, AI for care coordination. We in hospital settings and humans in general are not that great at coordinating care between different specialties. And that could be acute care coordination, where there's an acute finding, an emergency radiologist, we deal with this all the time, where we have to let the emergency physicians know or the uh, inpatient uh, physicians know about an acute finding, and we have to call them. Generally, that's on the phone or interrupting people. It's not optimal. How do you do that in a more facilitated way? And then follow-up care coordination, which is incidental findings. How do you make sure that these are actually getting followed up? So that's another module. Uh, then we'll go into radiologist efficiency, which tend to be natural language processing or large language model solutions that help us craft the radiology report and do some of the workflow components. Finally, uh, implementation considerations. I think people underestimate the difficulty of implementing any new technology, especially one like this that's a really, it's not just a IT information technology. It's a clinical technology. So a lot of education along with the change management has to be considered. So we'll go through that in the last didactic module. Uh, finally, you get an opportunity for some hands-on and it will be in an emergency imaging setting. So hopefully that presents you with a good breadth of the things that you will need to actively manage AI in emergency imaging. All right, finally, so what are some of the reasons that you all might want to take this course? Well, uh, hopefully you recognize that AI has already entered the radiology vernacular. People are talking about it. It's in every conference. There are articles about it everywhere. It's really hard to keep up with all of the information that is coming at us. This is a synopsis for you. AI is going to play a significant role in the evolution of diagnostic radiology. And that is something that you should be interested in if you have an interest in emergency imaging and diagnostic radiology. Um, individuals who are grasping the capabilities of how these models work and also understanding the limitations of them, those are the ones that have the power to influence its application. And I want, uh, we all need for our specialty to be doing that because we as clinicians should be driving patient care. The, uh, the last one I'll say is that if you understand the mechanics of AI models and can translate that and, and leverage this knowledge to inform users, that's the key to harnessing AI's full potential. You can't just deploy it without that educational understanding. Now, you don't need to know all the mathematics and the matrix multiplication, but you have to understand the basics of how the AI works well, where it's going to work and where it doesn't. So this course overall is designed to equip the participants with all of the necessary resources for you to effectively engage in conversations about, to evaluate, to critique, and deploy AI models in emergency radiology. I hope you enjoy it.